Hello students, we are now going to discuss paper 2 of JE Advanced 2013 Physics. Let's start the solution. I'm discussing code 8 and the first question of the code 8 is the multiple option 1. A steady current I flows along an infinitely long hollow cylindrical conductor of radius R. So here is infinitely long cylindrical conductor of radius R current I flowing in this direction. This cylinder is placed coaxially inside an infinite solenoid of radius 2R. So let me keep the infinitely long solenoid but if it's a solenoid the current is going circumferentially so current direction let me show it by cross here it would be dot. The solenoid carries current I, the current is same. And now we got to consider a point R from the central axis. For R greater than 0 less than R, that means from the axis we are here somewhere, magnetic field is non-zero, that's true. Here due to the cylindrical conductor the field is zero but due to the solenoid inside field is non-zero therefore option number A would be correct. In the region between greater than R and less than 2R magnetic field is along the axis that would be false because here the magnetic field due to the cylinder would be inside and the magnetic field due to the solenoid will be up so the resultant would not be along the axis neither will it be along the tangent. So B and C would be false. R greater than 2R, magnetic field is non-zero. That means we are here. And at this point, magnetic field due to solenoid is zero. But due to infinitely long conductor, it's non-zero. Therefore, option number D would be correct. So altogether for question 1, we have answer as A and answer as D. Now, let's go to the second question. The second question is from the chapter mechanical wave where Doppler's effect has been considered. Two vehicles each moving with speed u on same horizontal road are approaching each other. That means if this is one vehicle, this is another vehicle, they are approaching each other. Wind blows along the road with velocity w. Real and apparent frequency are f1 and f2. Let's see. If the wind blows from observer to S, observer to source. So if I call this as source, this as observer, the wind is blowing in this direction. Quite obviously, the speed of sound will have a subtraction with the speed of wind. But since they are approaching, so therefore the apparent frequency F2 has to be greater than F1. In the same manner, if the wind blows from source to observer, what gets added is the speed of sound. You get a new value of speed of sound, but the bottom line source and observer are approaching. Therefore, F2 would be greater than F1. Now we'll move to question number three. All right, let's see question number three. Two bodies of mass m each are kept fixed with separation 2L. That means m is here, m is here, the separation is 2L. Particle of mass m is projected perpendicular from the mid of line joining the center. And we got to find minimum initial velocity of m to escape is. So first, second, third option is all about escaping. That can be found by energy conservation. One half m u square is g m m by l multiplied by 2. And that will give us option number b. Out of a, b, c, b is correct. Then we talk about energy of the small particle that would not remain constant because for a single particle the energy defined is only the kinetic energy 
and as it goes away the kinetic energy decreases all right now question number four is from shm a spring block arrangement a block initially given a speed u naught and if any collision happens it is elastic the question says when the speed of the block is u naught by 2 it collides with the wall that means the amplitude is somewhere here so let's try to find at what time will the block hit the wall so using the data you could easily see that the block will hit the data at t by 6 you could use v equals to v naught cos omega t and you could get the data now let's see speed when it returns to equilibrium is u naught that's perfectly fine because it hits the wall and comes back there is no energy loss so speed will be u naught time taken to reach equilibrium for the first time it goes there and comes back so the total time would be t by 6 plus t by 6 t by 3 and placing t 2 pi root m by k this option would be incorrect time for maximum compression obviously t by 6 t by 6 plus t by 4 so if you add additional t by 4 that's the time for maximum compression which would be incorrect and time to pass equilibrium for the second time that means t by 3 t by 4 plus t by 4 additionally and plugging t as 2 pi root m by k you will get d as the correct option so your correct answer for this would be a and d we'll proceed to the next questions all right now let's see question number five it's a variation of specific heat capacity of a solid with respect to temperature and goes constant at 500 kelvin and it says the temperature is increased at constant rate based on this we got to answer rate at which heat is absorbed between 0 to 100 kelvin varies linearly this would be incorrect because you could see that dq is m c d capital t by dt so that would be dt you could easily see that temperature is increased at constant rate so now we have to see rate at which heat is absorbed between 0 to 100 that's quite obviously variable heat absorbed in increasing the temperature from 0 to 100 is less than heat required to increase from 400 to 500 kelvin and this is correct because you could see the heat absorbed would be m c d t and if you bring m outside it's an area under specific heat temperature graph and 400 to 500 the area is greater than 0 to 100 so b is correct there is no change in rate of heat absorption between 400 to 500 kelvin in fact in the original figure 400 to 500 it's almost constant there so between 400 to 500 c is constant so therefore change in rate of heat absorption is obviously zero so c option would be correct and rate of heat absorption increases between 200 to 300 kelvin that's quite obvious from the figure so d would also be correct so this question demands answer as b c and d now let's go to question number six question number six brought from modern physics Bohr's atomic model radius of orbit in hydrogen like atom is 4.5 a naught that means that's going to be 4.5 a naught is a naught n square divided by z because it's been said a naught is the Bohr's radius its orbital angular momentum is 3 h by 2 pi indicating n equals to 3 and if you put n 3 here we also get z equals to 2 and we have to see the 
possible wavelength when the atom d excites and that's going to be 1 by lambda equals to r z square 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square the atom is at state 3 so possibilities are from 3 to 1 3 to 2 and 2 to 1 so first situation let's consider 1 by lambda I'm considering going from 3 to 2 would be equals to r and z has already been found as 2 so that will be 4 3 to 2 that's 1 by 4 minus of 1 by 9 so 1 by lambda is 4 r into 5 divided by 36 so we are getting 9 by 5 r in the same way you'll be verifying from 3 to 1 2 to 1 so you'll be getting option as a as well so for this particular question number 6 the solutions are option A and option C. Now we'll see the next question.